Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today's video is going to be how I make my little pop-up cards that I've been using a lot in my planner recently. I find these really useful for lists and stuff, so I really, really love using them. I've had a lot of people ask me if I can show them how I do it. So if you want to know how, then just keep watching. Alright, so these are the kind of crazy flippers that I've been coming up with lately for my Planners Anonymous kits. I'm actually going to show you with some extra other paper just so that you see that you don't have to use Planners Anonymous, um, obviously, to make envelopes like this. So what we're going to do today is make one very, very similar to this one. So it's going to be reasonably simple and then I'll show you sort of how you can bling it up. So the first thing you need to do is work out roughly how big you want your envelope to be. So in this case, we need it to be, or we need, want it to be about 13 and a half centimetres high. So what you need to do is you need to get your paper, whichever one you're using, and I'm going to use this pink on the outside. And you need to sort of measure roughly 13 and a half if you're doing it that size high, and then add an extra centimetre on the bottom. And that's for the folding so that we actually make it into an envelope. So I'm just going to mark mine at 15. One, because it's easier. Two, because I really don't mind if it's just slightly bigger. And then you need your paper trimmer. And you can trim that bit out. So that's how high it's going to be. Then what you need to do is either get your get yourself your cutting mat out and your ruler and so something to be able to score with. Or you need to get your scoreboard. I love my scoreboard. I think it's awesome. So I'm going to use that. What you need to do is score out one centimetre all the way along the bottom. And just because I don't necessarily trust this scoreboard so much, just because it's in inches, not in centimetres, I always just like to measure that just to make sure that I'm right. So there's our score line. And we're going to just fold that up the whole way along just so I can see that it's straight or a good score at least, which thank God it is. There we go. And then you need to work out how wide you want it to be. So again, going back to the one we started with, this one's actual pocket is about 10 centimeters wide and then the tabs a centimeter and a half. So what you wanna do is work out your centimeter and a half, leave that, or mark it and go 10, which is your halfway point. And you wanna put the other 10, which is there, and that's where we're gonna cut. So you need to fold that down again. Get your trimmer back in again. Ryan's just reminded me, I forgot, I needed an extra centimetre on the end to fold it. Thank goodness he's here. So add that extra centimetre before you cut it. I'm just going to flip that over so I've got the really solid bit rather than the folded bit. Thank you, Ryan. Go. get scoreboard back in so we need to score where that one centimeter was which because we've marked it that makes it a lot easier so score straight down there and you need to score at the halfway point as well so again we've marked that so that makes it very very simple you just do that so then when we fold this all up As you can see, it's not finished because we've got to fold all this up and then do that. But you've got the general gist of it. So what I do to make this sit as flat as I possibly can in my planner is I start off with cutting the corners. So this is something I learnt when I was doing my wedding invitations. I cut them straight or on about this angle and then I spin it up, which means you're gonna get that nice, nothing touching kind of fold. And then the one in the middle, Best thing to do here is fold it back up again and just cut straight down. Doesn't really matter too much with the angle there. So you've ended up with that. And then when we do the tab in a minute, you're going to be able to see, oh actually it's probably easy to do it now. Uh, just mark sort of roughly where that is. But for me it's there. And then you want to come up on that angle. And then cut off the excess along the score line and that way you're not going to see that part of it where the tab is so it goes up like that 
then you can see we'll just tab that off. So we'll do that while we're here. So I use my tab board for this, it's much easier. There you go. And you've got your little tab board. Now something else I've just realised, don't actually need this bit. I don't know why I suddenly thought I did. So we're just going to cut that whole bit off, because that way it's got something to stick to on the actual part of it. Could do that with your trimmer of course, but I already had the scissors. It's just easier. That's better. I was wondering why that felt really thick. Now I've worked out why. So then all you need to do is actually glue this one together. So be but before you do that, you just need to work out if you want something like this. So this little card thing to sort of go in the middle and this one to pop out. So I'm just going to make a really quick little card just to use as an example. just to be nine and a half so it's going to slide in this really really easily so you've got plenty of room there so you just need to work out where you sort of want that to sit as in how far down you want your little bit here to go that'll make sense in a sec so you sort of put that all together we're going to use this little die cut and this is from the same collection as the paper so I want it to sit about there so because it needs to sit a little bit lower down, you need to leave, you need to mark out about here. Now you can be really, really, really precise with that if you like and get your ruler out and measure it out and make sure it's all really perfect. Um, I didn't do that with any of my sort of sliding ones just because I kind of like the, it not being perfect. So all I'm doing is cutting out a little notch in here that's roughly sort of how far down I want. The best thing is, if it's not as far as I want it to be, I can always add a little bit to it after the fact. It's obviously just a lot easier to do it before you stick it all together. So that doesn't look like much now, but in a minute that'll all make sense. So now we're gonna actually glue it together. It's up to you how stronger of a glue you use. I like to use my actual really strong Bostick glue, actually. Also just remember to do the little notch on the top as well so that it doesn't stick out too much. Uh, I like using my Bostick glue because it's a little bit stronger. I find it sticks better permanently. I have had some troubles with this envelope that the glue tapes kind of come apart. So glue the heck out of that and then fold it all together. And then you've got your little envelope all ready to go. You get your card or whatever you want to put in here. It doesn't have to be a card. It could be just a piece of cardboard slide that down. You want to play with it a little bit just because you need to get it to sit in there naturally and not hit that annoying little bit on the bottom which keeps it sitting up. Once you've done this a couple of times it will go in quite naturally. Sometimes it's a great idea to get your ruler out and just sort of poke around in there for a minute. So once you've got that sitting where you want it that's when you need to grab your little die cut or whatever you're using Get yourself some foam tape. You're going to place that foam tape where that's sticking up. Ha, I did it perfect. It's also up to you whether how, it's also up to you how many layers of foam tape you want to do because you don't just have to do one, you can actually do more than that. So for this one, I'm actually going to have it sitting up just a little bit higher. So I'm going to do two bits of foam tape. So I'm cutting another bit the same size, or roughly the same size. Stick that right on the top. So that's going to give us twice that height of foam tape. Okay. Get our little die cut. You can place that wherever you want. Right there. Give that a good stick. And then you've got something to grab hold of your little card, which still looks really cute. And that's really not sitting in its nice spot. There it is. Still looks really cute but doesn't look like there's actually something to grab so unless you knew there was actually something in there you'd never know that was an envelope so then all you need to do is punch your holes in the side obviously wherever you want to put it in your planner you can then decorate this and that's the fun part so if you wanted to leave that as just a card for me it was really great for having my footy details in but you could put 
information about maybe what you're doing at the gym. You could put your meal plans in here. You could put kids schedules in here. You could like make it into a little booklet like I did. And you could sew, sew that up or staple it or whatever you wanted to do. And then you can make some more fun out of this. And that's where I had so much fun was adding bits and pieces to the actual envelope. So if you remember, I had that little flipper which had my little shaker in it. And then I had my footy details in the little book at the back. So rather than decorating the envelope on the back like I did with my Wonderlust one, what I'm gonna do is actually make like a little thing or window on the front of this little card. I'm not gonna do a shaker, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra sort of something to it. So using this one from We Are Memory Keepers, I'm just gonna sit this where it needs to be. And we're gonna punch out this little hole. You could use, do this with a die cutting machine. You could also do it using your Cricut, or you could just cut it out by hand if that's what you if you don't have any of those tools. I'm just going to have a little drop down because I think the drop down thing looks really cute and then I'm going to chuck in a little quote thing sort of here. So I'll do the little flip first. So I'm going to... So I'm going to invert this so that it actually flips the other way so not using the same colour paper. That's really good to do if you have double sided paper. That's actually, I'm going to say a good trick, like it's a simple trick that actually sort of adds a bit of dimension to it. So just because it's the easiest way to do this, all you do is stick this bit of cardboard back in its hole. Make sure it sits in there as nicely as it can. And just stick your washi tape down. So I'm just using this marble one. I've just torn it because I'm really into that whole torn look at the moment. But then you've got your little flip up. Come on. So that's going to flip up and sort of expose your peekaboo. And then on the inside here, I'm going to grab this little off cup. I love these stripes. I think they look awesome. And I'm just going to grab my little trimmer instead of my big trimmer. So I always have to just sort of refer back to where, what your size is. Do a bit something a little bit more weird. I don't know why. I feel like that's going to look really cool when you sort of pop it. Uh, maybe not. I do love that whole idea though. Sometimes I amaze even myself. Mm. Right, I'm just going to go with this bit first, and then we're going to stick one of the little die cut bits on there as well so we can put a sentiment so this could actually be like a birthday card like you could just not put this tab bit on it and you could actually have it as a birthday card that you pop out sometimes you can take an idea and kind of change it into something else and that's what I did with my funfair one kind of took that really simple idea and then just ran with it so I'm just going into my little die cut place. So again just grabbing the glue. And the idea is you're only supposed to get the peak by lifting this up. You're not supposed to get all of it. I'm going to put this little butterfly in on the side. I'm actually going to put it in with some foam tape because this envelope does take a little bit of dimension about it which is nice. Grab just a teensy bit of foam tape and I'm going to put that right in the middle. And that'll lose a little bit of it when you put it back in the envelope, but the idea will still be there. And then you can write your little sentiment there, but you've got your little pop-up bit kind of there. It really doesn't want to sit at the bottom. And so you've still got, like that doesn't look like it's got anything too big in there. And it still looks really, really cool. So that's sort of how you can personalise these a little bit. You can still obviously go further. You can chuck more die cuts on the front. That one's not in that collection, but you can. You can add little bits to the back, but just remember to do them before you fold it up and glue it. But that's sort of how I make those envelopes, and that way you can really personalise them to whatever you need them to be. So that is it for today's video. I think the best thing about these envelopes is that you don't need to use your planners anonymous boxes. If you've got them, the kit's obviously set up with your die cuts and everything to kind of all 
working together but if you don't have it and you've just got random bits of cardboard hanging around you can always put something together that looks really really cool like these two are two completely different collections and I think that looks awesome um, having that little envelope is an extra way to number one make some cool cards which I've just realized is such a great idea and I may have to make Ryan's birthday card now as a pop-up um, but to keep extra things in your planner like lists like school notes things like that that you need to keep in there but you don't want just sort of chucked into your planner and and spread out all over the place so it's just a little extra thing that you can do that is it for today's video guys I hope you did enjoy it and you did find it helpful let me know down below if you would like anything further explained I really enjoy showing you guys how I kind of create all these little things most of them come out of nowhere but eh. Um, it's always fun to sort of sit down and try and explain how I came up with that brainwave. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias. Remember, I am going to announce my 5,000 subscriber giveaway today over on Instagram. So make sure you are following me there. Other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic, fantastic weekend. And I will see you again for decoration on Monday. Sending you lots of huggles. Bye.